So how do I use references and come up with my own concept in ZBrush? This method could vary from person to person. But I will share some tips about how I approach to making my own concept in ZBrush. Of course, no art is original. During the Renaissance times, artists and sculptors use real life models for their work. Just like this, we use digital references using PureRef. Yes. Pure Ref is an amazing reference tagging application and it is completely free. You can download it now and I recommend you do so. Now for this Halloween scene, let's take this girl for example. I searched some references and found Mitchell's and the Machine's character Katie would be ideal candidate for my model. So I downloaded bunch of references and used her childhood face to model this character. But I sculpted the face only. So what about the whole body? Again, references do play a vital role in this whole process. So I searched playful child on Google and found the appropriate poses for my character. Try to create a visual library in your brain. Let all this data sink in. Improve observation. Not only see for the sake of seeing, try to see with the purpose of seeing. This is something I learned from 2D artists like Kim Jung Ji. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. So use this quote and try to imagine things. Remember, references are only there to help you. They won't get the job done completely. You don't want to be a copycat. You want to create your own stuff. One thing I always think about when I'm about to create or block out something. I try to break down the design in simple forms. Having the simple forms, I can think clearly and can manipulate them easily. Low poly geometry like spheres would be ideal choice for me at this stage. At this moment, I'm only thinking about blocking out the main forms. The good thing about low poly spheres is they are very friendly with move brush and I can smooth them out easily. So how I use this quote of Albert Einstein, imagination is more powerful, is that use your imagination to create. In ZBrush, we have an amazing tool called Silhouette. It is something used widely in character design for decades and still one of the most important aspects in character creation workflow. Disney animators teach this and call it one of the fundamentals of character design. So in this Kim Jong Ji tribute, may he rest in peace, I only had one reference for the caricature. But what about the whole scene? The angels on the shoulders, the painting board and the gesture of the hands. I use this black screen here which is called silhouette or shadow. This is something I use most of the time. When you see a silhouette, always try to make interesting shapes. Curves against straights, having tapering, don't have tangents and just like that, the basic principles of character design. So we all know what a hand looks like when holding a brush like this. But how to make this hand look more appealing? For that, I used all these character design fundamentals and converted realistic hand with this stylized hand. Think about how you can turn real shapes into stylized ones. And to able to think about that, you have to study. Yes, study character design. See videos how Disney animators make characters, read a book, Google search, anything. And believe me, after some time, this would all become second nature for you real quick. It also helps if you break the reference in pieces, either in your visual library or on a painting software. Pick a reference, try to recognize the big shapes and break it into a more simplified version. That way, you will recognize the silhouette more better, would be able to see big shapes and the most important thing, you would get to see the proportions. Proportions are something many beginner artists ignore while they begin their sculpting. It is one of the most important part of the character design. By ignoring the proportions, you can have inaccurate, lumpy, uninteresting shapes. Even if your silhouette is good but proportions are off, no amount of details or good texturing can save your model. Now proportions varies from style to style. There is always a need of accurate proportions if you are doing a realistic work. For example, humans, animals, birds. Anything which resembles real life and they all need real proportions to be able to look good and accurate. But the rules of proportions are not necessary if you are doing a stylized cartoon or any fantasy character. There are countless examples in which a cartoon design have inaccurate proportions but they look good. Why? Because they apply the fundamentals of a character design which made them more limitless towards their artistic approach. Caricatures are another example of exaggerated proportions. They are done in a way that a person can still be recognizable but the proportions doesn't make any sense. The design 
element helps it make it more interesting. But again, the caricatures are also a part of stylized work. I did some caricatures myself by playing certain parts of a face. I have made them more interesting and it helps define the character more compared to their realistic looks. So guys, treat proportions very carefully because it is as much important as silhouette and shapes. If done wrong, it can throw up your work real quick. One trick I use all the time is that whenever I'm looking at the reference while sculpting, I watch it then immediately move my eyes away from the reference. It helps me see the subtle change and differences immediately. And there is a science behind this. What you see in real life, your brain only remembers it visually for 5 seconds. Yes, if you look at a picture and then look away, you remember the picture exactly for 5 seconds and not more. So I use this as a tool to make my model accurate as much as possible. This method is also used by many known artists like Hussein Deba. I recommend watching his interview with the ZBrush team at Pixologic ZBrush YouTube channel, where he explained his process and progress over the years that how he got his observation to a very good level. He also mentions his method for looking at a picture for 5 seconds and looking it away to the model like I explained earlier. For finding the references, Google is the best source followed by Pinterest. I use Pinterest most of the time. It is good for finding stylized work. There are also art sites like ArtStation, Divet Art, and Behance. They get updated daily and I look at them for inspiration purposes. For the anatomy, Anatomy 360 is a good source for finding the pose references followed by some books like Anatomy for Sculptors and Drawing from Life by George Bridgman. Proko on the other hand has some good anatomy videos on YouTube, you can check it out. Always study your references. I can't state this much enough. Spend time with your references as much as possible, either it's a face of a person or a concept of a stylized character. Study the reference, study the style, study the anatomy or even study the colors. Make a visual picture in your mind, break the concept somehow, think about the three stages before making a character, primary, secondary and tertiary shapes. Treat primary shapes the most important because it is the foundation of many things and it will help read the character better. Primary shapes also helps with the silhouette and the gesture of a character. Now last but not the least, get feedback always. Either you are on a Facebook, Discord or any other social media platform. It will help you grow more faster compared to researching by your own. You can do both but by getting feedback by others it will shorten the amount of finding your problems on a model compared to finding the problem on your own. You can join my Facebook group. In fact, I highly recommend you join it so. We provide feedbacks completely free. I have made this community for beginner as well as senior artists. And our best intent is to help people grow on their artistic journey. That's it guys, I hope you find this short video helpful and remember this, no matter how slow progress is, it's still progress. I will see you on the next video.